All right, now we have the background mountains established. Um, the next thing, the swamp creature kind of thing we have going on. I'll show you that real quick again. Um, so the reference is like a swampy little uh, bayou kind of vernal pool kind of thing. Um, before we do that, though, I'm going to establish like uh, background trees. And once again, these won't be able to be seen too much because of the foreground trees. However, you still want to do a decent amount of time on those things. Uh, you should use a round brush for this, but uh, I let paint dry my round brush. All I have is a bright brush. But yeah, for this, I would use a round brush, that for sure. Um, so I'll dip it in the blues. And now I'm going to use more green. So as you go up closer, there's going to be more contrast in this. And with these background trees, I'm going to establish those first. Go really blurry at first. I'll go darker on the bottom here. This is a bad brush stroke. Don't, don't look at that. So see how bad the brush strokes is? So you can't use a brush stroke like that. You gotta hide it. So I'm gonna hide it by doing multiple stumbling techniques. And I'm gonna get rid of some of those trees that are in the background to establish these. And with this, I get the basic shape. So the shape's really important. And once again, the brush strokes, I'm using a bright brush, use a round. And I'm like stabbing it back and forth um, to create the illusion of different patterns in the in the trees. Now these are gonna have less contrast than the ones in the foreground, but I'm gonna start a little bit dark and I'll add highlights to them a little bit later. Uh, so this is like overall, and I wouldn't do much more than this. So like this amount of area is probably pretty good. Uh, I'll do another taller one here. All of this will come all the way up here, overlap that as well. And it looks a little too cylindrical, so I'll get some more sharp red brush strokes on the outsides. And then I'm gonna blur it out. I'll show you how to blur it out though. So to blur out the, the trees so they don't look quite as like, you know, you can see each individual brush stroke, not a good technique. So I have a paper towel, dipped it in water, and then I wrung it out and I wadded it up so it's like a like a finger size. With a finger, it's kind of like blending the other trees. I'm gonna come in here and just lightly tap it in. And as long as you don't let your paint dry too much, you should be able to go in and feather out some of the edges pretty easy. And I'm just gonna blur them out so you can barely see them. And then I'll put the more high contrast ones in front of those. And down here as well, I'll blur those out. Okay, so these are gonna be the trees here eventually. Now I'll come back in, I'll do a whole row of them. So this is more of a blue base on this thing. I'll come in here, a little more contrast once again. I'll add some white to it. So it's not quite as dark as that. I, want, I still want contrast, but not as much as the uh, foreground is gonna be. So I want this to stand out. So the foreground trees, you gotta plan it out. So the foreground tree is gonna be really uh, dark. So for the dark trees to show up, you gotta add these light, right? So it's gonna be the same kind of thing. Coming in here, blocking out the basic trees. Shapes, these are further away in the distance. <clears throat> and then almost like uh, multiple strokes, small strokes all the way up to the tippy top of that one. And it's kind of a larger brush, whether it's a round or a bright brush, doesn't really matter too much, I suppose. But the main thing is, is you want to make sure that it's kind of all blurry and, you know, saturated, kind of all coming together with the values and contrast. All right, then I'll even do the trees going all the way across over here as well. So with that, I'm going to add a little more yellow even. So this is a little more yellow, a little more green. So you want to change color quite a bit. And then I'll cover this whole area. I'll just one side over here first. And then it's gonna darker on the bottom, lighter on the top. So I have a little bit of a black base on this thing on the bottom, then lighter, more close to the mountain values on the top. All right, so those are all the techniques so far. This is like a base coat though for the trees. So these trees currently are like just giant blobs, which is okay for this phase, don't panic. Then here it's too thin, so you want to make sure your first coat's kind of thicker. So I'm going to go in here, once again, thick paint, a little bit of black, a little bit of blue, green, 
And then you don't want a pattern. So you don't want like tree, 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 tree. You want to have like some that look like they overlap. So I'm going to do like a larger one here. Maybe a little bit darker. I'll add a little more black to it. I suppose we can. You know, it's legal. We don't get fired for these things. And once again, even though this is going to be covered, um, I'm still going to go in there with the base coat and establish the hills and the trees. Okay, I'll do this half over here. And for my later show, I'm going to do the other half and uh, include a building on that one. So you can see how thin this is right here. So that means not enough paint. So I'll mix up a little more paint. It's a little thicker. Now these are starting to get a little too green. So I'm not worried about it though. Because one thing, it's not really my project. Second thing is that I can go over it with more glazes on top. Okay, then over here on this side will be the same thing with the trees. <clears throat> Big building over here. Uh, so these are just background information, so I don't have to worry about it too much. Now I add a little more black to it. And scumble. Trees in there. Then here it's almost too blurry, so I'm going to go back in, crisping up some of it. But you can do a lot of this crisping up um, your edges with a smaller brush. It's a pretty big brush. Mine is called a medium size bright brush. And I'll go back in with a smaller brush later. All right, so that's kind of it for the trees, tree base coat. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here with a smaller bright brush, about this size, and I'll come in with some of the highlights, which I'm gonna use a little bit more of the blue atmospheric perspective. So if you look at uh, trees, you might wanna think of them like um, your foreground color of the trees plus your sky is your middle ground. That's that's this. So adding some sky colors in there to establish um, some highlights. And then just with a bright brush. And then I'll add some leaves to it to make it look a little more pronounced. So now I'm not doing all of it. I'm allowing some of the shadows to show through. Not all of them, but I'm going to add some of them in there. Like, this is, like, way too light here. But I think I can, like, feather it out a little bit. So then if I have, like, a highlight here, I have a highlight on top, leave it darker in the bottom. So it's not, like, one tree. In other words, you don't want to have, like, a highlight on the top, and then that's it. And it's just darker and darker. Otherwise, it won't look like it stands out enough. So all these trees I'm coming in here with... Highlight shadows. This is once again just layer number two. That's all it is. And I'm gonna establish the big forms of them. So here it's kind of all solid, but if I add a little more of a tint, a little highlight, I'll come in here and I'll add like a secondary, almost like a top of a smaller tree right in front of that tree. Small strokes, feathering it out. And you shouldn't be going this fast. So this is, if this is my painting, I would take way more time on it. And then I'll do another little one here. So now I have another little tree on top of that tree. So you can see it's like different little shapes of trees. Clouds are the same way, so we're mountains. It's like you just add, like, so even if you're not painting trees, uh, learning these techniques can help you with clouds and other things. All right, so now I'm going to go in here, do the same thing. I'll leave that, like, unfinished so you can see different phases of it. Okay, so that's layer number two. So we got some highlights, some shadows, the deep base coat. Now I'm gonna come in with a round brush, a little round brush like this, more or less. And with this, you wanna be a little more accurate. So you can come in there, I'll go maybe a little bit darker. And if you add just like some of the little leaves on there, and it's weird you don't have to add that many leaves. So if you just add a few leaves, People think the whole thing looks good when, just like all most art, when you get up close to it, it doesn't look that magical. But when you step back and you go like, oh wow, it looks like a tree. So see these little dots I'm putting in there? Those look like leaves and they'll look pretty good eventually. And these trees don't have to be as good as the foreground trees. 
but they need to be better than the background trees. Background were just blobs. Now I'm adding leaves to these things. And it's, watch this, there's a tricky part here. So when you're doing leaves, um, have some that are floating. Like watch this, small stroke, small stroke, small stroke, and they're not even attached to anything, they're just like floating. It's kind of cool. And I know you guys think it's illegal, but honestly though, the leaves that are floating will give that sense of realism to it. All right, so now I'm coming in here. So, and I like to add the leaves to like the worst looking areas. So it's kind of like you're hiding your messes. And I'll do some smaller strokes here. But you can see this compared to that. So layer one or this layer two. Layer two versus layer uh, three. And we'll add some more highlights over here. A little more leaves, more detail. And in here, I'll even come in with a little more contrast, a little more black. I'll even get some deeper set areas in here. So in this area, I'll start out dark. Hit that up. So in the bottom, you're looking through all that dense foliage. So you want that to be pretty dark down here on the, on the base. And then we'll give you like a sense of like what tree's in front of what. So like here, it's kind of like a little ambiguous uh, highlights. So now we'll come in with the dark values and shade that in. Now all of a sudden this thing sticks out a little more. So it's a little more predominant. Okay, so now what I have like overall this look. So this is layer one, layer two, layer three, layer four. Now with layer five, I'm going to come in with some highlights. I'm gonna add a little white to my green and yellow and do the same thing where I add some leaves on the inside of this, some of the floating ones. I have that overlap as well. Then you can take your finger and kind of tap it because you don't want your brush stroke to look like you can see every single leaf. Otherwise, everybody's a critic. It's like, oh, I didn't get enough leaves in there. It's like, ah, you know, it's like here, see all the old dots? They look like dots. So I'll come in there and I'll like tap it to blur it out. And you put in a couple good leaves. Like that movie, A Few Good Men. It's like a few good leaves. And I'll put those in there. Then I'll skip over a little bit. And I always say don't go from right to left. Go from loose to tight. So in other words, if you do one little area here, then skip all the way over here. See if you like it. You might discover you don't need as much as you thought originally. All right, so that area is almost done. Except now, this is the next layer. This is a layer, whatever number we're on. Five, maybe. Um, I'm going to come in there and do some trunks of the trees. So I'm going to come in here a little bit with the branches. I'll go a little bit darker. Then I'll add highlights to them. So the branches of the trees, I'll come in like where you can see them, and then I'll like have it disappear, and then maybe come back out of the bottom again. Another one over here, little branches, and a thick one there. And when you paint, notice how I'm not going to the side. So if you want a straight line, you need to go right on top of the canvas. It's not like this, you'll, you'll do a good branch. It has to be like perpendicular to the canvas. <clears throat> if you want a really skinny line, milk the kitten. Just like, kind of like milk on the brush a little bit so you get a nice little point on the edge. And just a few more branches here. Okay. So that's good enough for that step. So after that step's done, now I'm gonna come in with some highlights. I'm just gonna do like a grayish brown, more or less, a little bit of black, brown, a little white. Maybe a little more white, couldn't really see that one. And 
I don't know the whole thing. Just like just enough where you indicate like highlights on the branches. And most of these oddly enough will also get covered by the foreground trees. Oops, those are my fingers. <laughs> Erase that and that. Alright, so anyway, so that's it pretty much with the background trees. Layer one, layer two, layer three, layer four, and five. So the section right here is done. Um, the rest of it's not quite done, but good enough for now. And then I'll continue the rest of the show here in a little bit. So these are background trees. You can see the leaves in there, the details, the floating leaves. But the background trees, now that you see them, um, they're starting to look better, even though I haven't touched them. But it's like, once you get something good up front, and once again, the brain's eye will make you think that the whole bunch of trees are really good. When in fact, most of them are once again, not that great. Just a few of the good ones in the front. So, finished. Layer two. Then barely started. And those are background trees.